Yes. Okay, good. So good afternoon, everyone. And for the people that is connected uh, from other time zones, uh, maybe good morning or good evening. Um, so um, I'm Francesco Pacci, as already introduced, and I'm working as a, an application uh, engineer at Greenways. So let me uh, give you an introduction of um, so where do we uh, work and where do we place us? So um, uh, we target AI, uh, which we know that in, in recent years is moving to the edge, um, opening up some uh, new um, challenges, like, for example, um, cloud congestion or privacy, or maybe other two, which uh, might be more related to um, uh, to the context of uh, the AI deck and the and the nano drones, uh, so decision latency and um, power. I think that uh, I hope that uh, most of you followed this morning uh, the Daniele Palossi um, uh, presentation, which was describing quite well uh, all the problems related to deployment. And also, I thank him because he uh, uh, presented part of Gap Eight and uh, most of the architecture of the architecture and uh, and and introduced also uh, very good uh, my presentation. So uh, when we move to the edge, we have several problems. Uh, from uh, one side, we have uh, uh, we need to be scalable to uh, the workload that we need, uh, so so that we sh we shut down uh, part of the chip when we don't need it. Uh, we need to take care about the, abs the, the absolute consumption rate uh, that we have. Um, in our in our board in our products and also we need to be fast so uh, to move fast between transitions so we can uh, uh, go to sleep and consume few uh, microwaves and then uh, wake up and then uh, do inference and uh, maybe um, uh, use different uh, part of the chip that can be um, uh, shut down or uh, wake up quickly and also uh, we need to support to uh, quite a wide range of compute uh, tasks, uh, like uh, all the part related to acquisition and pre-processing of data, uh, and also the inference, uh, but um, uh, the algorithm that we use uh, change. So, um, um, so we, we need to have something which, is, um, which can do also general purpose computing. So a, a little bit, um, a glance on, on green waves technology uh, a bit a little bit of context of, of the history and, um, and of the company so we we it's a company uh, from Grenoble France uh, that was founded in uh, November 2014 in 2016 we started developing gap 8 and uh, that was launched no um, yeah in 2016 and then in 2018 we launched it uh, we started shipping again in 2018 um, boards. We opened two offices, one in Bologna and one in Shanghai in 2019. And also um, we did the launch of the new product product at the end of the year. And in 2020, we, have gap, we had Gap8 on the AI deck. And uh, today we are around 50 um, employees uh, between all the offices that we have. So, um, said that, uh, I would like to give you three points that are the points um, that we, um, uh, that, that are the key points uh, that we had in mind, mind when we developed uh, GAP8. So, the first one is to have uh, an architecture which can deliver high compute and uh, with, um, with a low power. So, um, uh, so that it's not uh, executing just monolithic block, uh, but um, uh, to, to deliver uh, high um, MIPS. And so that can be agile, uh, as again said, so that can move between different states uh, um, uh, quickly. Uh, and the, the third point is the flexibility. So the fact that, um, yes, we have an accelerator, but uh, also uh, we, we can run uh, general purpose computing, so we have um, standard cores where that can use for uh, uh, to run any application or any algorithm. 
We have open source origins, so uh, our course, our RISC five course, and uh, as again said this morning by Daniele, uh, we ca we come from the Pulp project. So Gap eight, uh, it's part of the uh, uses the Pulp project, uh, where actually then come then it comes from. Uh, I'll give a brief introduction to the architecture. Uh, I know that um, Daniele already did this morning, uh, but um, uh, m maybe there are some people which uh, wasn't attending, so I'll just give a brief introduction that will help for the next slides. Uh, so uh, the uh, gap eight itself is uh, composed of, of two uh, main blocks. Uh, we have a fabric controller, which is actually a kind of an MCU, which is um, uh, having a one risk five core and uh, a micro, micro DMA, which is handling all the communication with the peripherals. And this micro DMA is also in charge. Uh, it's like kind of micro core, which um, uh, can move data and uh, handle all, all uh, transfer between uh, all the peripherals. So for example, on the AI deck, um, uh, there are two memories, which um, so the flash and the RAM, which are actually in the same package, uh, which are handled through the hyperbus, and also uh, QVGA camera. Uh, in the case of the AI deck, it's the HiMax, but it could be uh, something else, which is handled through the CPI. Um, and then uh, we have a second part, which is called cluster, where um, uh, we feature eight cores that are again um, risk five cores and um, an hardware accelerator, um, which uh, accelerate three by three convolutions. Uh, in the cluster, we have 64 kilobyte of L1 memory, which uh, is uh, shared in between the cores and uh, it's um, uh, through the logarithmic interconnect, the access is quite fast. But what I wanted also to show and to remark again, it's the fact that um, the chip itself has 512 kilobyte of L2 memory, and uh, then can feature, can have some external memory, which can could be also uh, through SPI or code SPI. Um, so, and all these memory are uh, not uh, automatic, uh, not caches. So uh, they are memory which um, needs to be manually addressed. Um, uh, and, and so we need to move data uh, to, mm, to, to the point which is closer to where we do the computation uh, to do it uh, um, fast uh, and, um, and in parallel. Okay, so let me uh, give also an introduction on the, um, on, on the tools that we have. So, uh, we uh, feature two main uh, OSs, uh, which one is FreeArt OS, and the second one is Pulp OS, which is uh, the one that has been developed uh, within the Pulp, the, uh, the Pulp project. And uh, uh, we have um, a layer which we call PMC API, which is actually shared in between the OS, uh, because I mean, these are the two uh, main um, uh, OS, but we have also an implementation of Zephyr, which is not on our GitHub, uh, but uh, um, which can be, uh, which which will be, and um, and also we have a simulator, which can be uh, quite handful for developing if uh, ahead of testing on the board, and also for debugging, and um, we have a risk five GCC um, uh, toolchain. On high-level tools, uh, and this this is what uh, my uh, talk today uh, uh, will present. Uh, we have two main tools, uh, which are called GAP, OT Tyler, and NN Tool, and we support TensorFlow and ONNX uh, models. And also, we have um, some examples of um, algorithm with or without um, machine learning and neural networks. Um, the chip, uh, so as I presented this uh, fabric controller and cluster, uh, um, actually features three uh, main uh, power states. So we have a duty cycling, which is uh, actually sleep mode and uh, could be retentive with memory where we consume few uh, tens of microwatts. Uh, then uh, we can um, turn on the fabric controller and um, acquire some data 
or, or do some uh, pre-filtering uh, of uh, our data. And then we can turn on the full chip, consuming um, less than 80 to 100 milliwatt uh, to exploit all the features. So the uh, fabric controller plus uh, using the eight cores on the cluster. Okay, so where it comes from, the energy efficiency of GAP, I, I have four points. So one is due uh, to um, uh, CMD uh, instruction and uh, DSP extensions. Uh, so we added some instruction to the, instru to, to the standard is 5 uh, instruction set. Um, we have an efficient par parallelization on the cores, so we can actually dispatch um, uh, um, all um, uh, the job on the course and we have automatic clock gating which means that, that if uh, one or some of the course they are uh, in idle then uh, the clock is gated to uh, gain some 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 power and uh, also we have a shared instruction clash and explicit memory management which is reducing uh, the power overhead of instruction fetch and also not using caches help uh, in uh, in uh, consuming less power um, given that uh, we have a predictability on the data movement. And also, um, I mean, we have this uh, state change, which is quite fast, and this is the one that I just showed in the, uh, in the slide before. Uh, just to give you an idea of, of the perf, uh, and it's uh, on top of what also Daniele said this morning, uh, if we uh, compare um, um, uh, CIFAR 10 or mobile net, in, in this case, uh, between an STM 32H7 and GAP8, um, uh, given that we have the same frame rate for, for, for both. And for example, in this case, we use a mobile net V1 reduced, uh, which is uh, consuming, uh, which is sorry, sorry, reduced because uh, the, the bigger one cannot go in, S in, the, in the STM 32H7. Uh, we have here a, a, a power consumption uh, which is power, but uh, it could be converted into millijoule because the, the execution time is the same for both, uh, which is uh, 15 to 16 uh, per better than, uh, than an STM32. And also given that we are a silicon technology um, older uh, generation than uh, the STM32 because GAP8 has been taped out in uh, 55 nanom nanometers, while um, the STM 3287 is in 40. Okay, so uh, the architecture is uh, only 50% of the story. And I think, uh, again, I'm citing Daniele because uh, uh, he showed pretty well, for example, uh, that uh, with different um, versions of the tool, it can achieve a lot better performance on, um, on, on the AI deck. And, uh, and and just I mean uh, with uh, new versions, uh, it it really showed that uh, it changes uh, and the silicon, so the hardware uh, behind it's uh, the same. Okay, so uh, I think that uh, once we have the silicon, I think from an an application development uh, um, uh, or an, an application uh, development guy or uh, that have to develop, uh, there are few challenges uh, to uh, bring machine learning to um, uh, to GAP8, but also to to embed. And uh, that uh, what the first one is that we have this parallel course, so we need to 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 to. to to parallelize our code. So we cannot just take something which is working on our PC and put it there. So we need to tackle this. The second one is that if we want really to, um, to exploit the power of the course, we need to uh, use the vector units. Uh, so we need to exploit the built-in uh, instruction to use the vector units. Vector units can do four uh, in eight instruction per cycle or two in 16. Um, and again, and 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 the third point is that um, uh, this um, hierarchical memory uh, need to be um, explicitly handled. So uh, we have to answer to to the question of where do we store the data, 
to get the best performance for our algorithm. And we also um, uh, exploit, can expl we need to exploit the DMA to, uh, to tile and buffer our algorithms um, so, that, um, so that the data movement are uh, partly um, uh, hidden by, uh, by the DMA transferring while the cores are uh, producing results for, from the pre previous transfer. And the, the last two points is that uh, uh, GAPAIT has uh, in, integer arithmetic. So we need to quantize in case, for example, of, uh, of neural network which are trained in a floating point, we need to quantize them. And we need also to make sure that the accuracy that we have in, um, in our floating point, it's uh, not uh, degraded. Uh, or not too much degraded. And also, uh, uh, usually when we train um, and we use a machine learning frameworks, so we have used TensorFlow, we use uh, PyTorch, we use CAFE. Uh, so we need to extract the data, so the, 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 in, in the CNN, the weight and the biases, but also uh, the information about the graph, so um, the math operations that are, that are in there, and also uh, the layer of our networks. So um, how do how how do we tackle this, and what did uh, we uh, develop to um, uh, to work on this point? Uh, so uh, from an from an application flow, uh, if we want to develop a machine learning algorithm, we need to um, do some uh, standard um, steps, which are the same if we want to deploy some. Uh, on a PC or other platform, which is working on data collection and preparation, do model training, or take a model uh, already training in some of the models who, uh, which are um, around in the web. Uh, then probably, uh, not in all cases, but uh, in some cases, we need to uh, do a graph conversion, which, um, uh, which in case we have a very big model, we need to, tr to try to shrink uh, for these uh, embedded platforms. And uh, then once this is done, we need then we have uh, our our model and we need to port it to um, an embedded system. So uh, uh, for this, uh, we we do this gap flow, uh, which supports ONNX and TensorFlow Lite models and uh, brings them uh, to, to gap eight. How this is done? So this is done um, with two main blocks. So uh, we uh, get in uh, a TF light, TensorFlow light, or an NNX graph. And uh, the first step is done by a tool which is called NN tool, which is actually a graph imported, uh, which imports the nodes and uh, also maps them uh, on, on, the, on the computational nodes, um, uh, which, uh, which are optimized and which I will talk uh, in the next slide. And, but also we need to do quantization or maybe just import it from TensorFlow Lite and also maybe do some calibration on the data set or, um, uh, or add some uh, layers related to um, transposition of the input image um, or also um, uh, some resizing or other pre-filtering. And then uh, we need to produce an AT model. Uh, what is this uh, AT model, and why we do we need that? Why do we need it? so? It's um, it's this gap to Tyler, which is a um, a tool written in C, which runs on your PC, and which um, de deal with uh, optimizing data movement between uh, the memories that you are available in your system. So, um, which can be uh, L1, L2, uh, or you can also have an external uh, RAM, so L3. And, uh, and calculate the optimal tiling for, uh, to move the data. And, uh, and then to produce this code, which can be deployed on either on, on chip, so on GAP, or uh, on the GVSOC to test. So in terms of uh, the first point, in terms of memory constraint, uh, the challenge is, is where we store the, 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 um, the static data. So, uh, and where do we store the parameters? So how do we choose where to store between the size and also the size of the tree buffer that you use uh, for L1, L2, L3 will change dynamically while you execute your graph. And um, also uh, we need to tile uh, the data to reduce um, 
the memory uh, latency or to hide the memory latency. And the third point is that uh, uh, we need to employ this double buffering mechanism. Okay, and so this is uh, the, the point that I just explained before on, on this explicit memory handling. So for this, uh, we did this outer tiler, which is composed on, on, uh, on of four main blocks. So the first one are basic kernels, which is a library uh, of uh, computing kernels that map a eight or 16 bits um, input output layers um, and that, that are parallelized uh, and optimized to be executed on a GAP8 cluster. So we have generators, which are, um, um, which are um, which is um, a, a part of the auto tiler, which um, uh, which express how uh, what are the input and output and the memory constraint and how the 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 tiling should um, should happen. And then we have an IT, an IT mobile, which is actually a collection of the nodes that you have in your graph. So uh, if you have two convolution and uh, two relus, then uh, you can express in an AT model. And then uh, there is a graph description, which is actually how these uh, nodes are linked together. So node one is linked to node two, and that is linked to node uh, D, uh, or maybe there are then two parallel nodes that can be executed in parallel, or um, so that is actually expressing all this, um, the, the constraint of the of the graph so why do we need this thing so why do we need uh, this basic kernels this generator and all the thing related to graph so the first thing about basic kernels is that we would really like to write uh, for example a convolution one we have once we have written a convolution uh, three by three which is optimized uh, why shouldn't we we've been able to use it for um, for all our different problems. So these are basic kernels. So we actually express um, our algorithm in a way that uh, that can be, um, th that is doing the task that we want uh, him to do, thinking that uh, all, all the data is in L1. Uh, so in this way, um, we, we, we optimize the convolution, uh, the for example, the three by three convolution, we optimize it once. Then, um, uh, and we think of it as if uh, all the data uh, was uh, always in L1, okay? Uh, on this, we deliver um, a lot of basic kernels, uh, mostly related on uh, CNN and uh, RNN, but also on uh, DSP audio and on uh, pre-filtering algorithms and image processing. And so uh, this is the way we deal with the parallel programming and built in. Obviously, you can uh, actually write your basic kernels yourself. Um, uh, so, and the basic kernels that we um, we provide are open source. Uh, but I mean, since the, um, a, a three by three convolution, when once is optimized, is optimized, and when you use the, the you use the uh, the vector unit and uh, all the, the 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 best instruction for that is done why don't uh, don't use it again so this is really the logic behind uh, these basic kernels then um on 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 this 80 um, model why do we need an 80 model and why can't we go from a, a tensorflow like graph directly uh, converting this uh, conf to the uh, mapping directly onto um, onto gap, uh, and one thing is that, for example, if we have this is um this is an MNIST network, um, so once uh, we have it uh, uh, for once we load the data for the conv two D, uh, then we can also locally do, do the relu. Um, um, the relu operation and then the ma ma max pooling it's also working locally on a closer closed data so what will happen if we map it directly as it is uh, onto gap and it's uh, kind of what is doing tensorflow for my co controller it's that uh, if my data doesn't fit in l1 because i have a big layer and it's in l2 or maybe even in l3 then i have to move uh, uh, my tile so uh, of data that I want to uh, 
uh, to do the convolution on, on the L1, do the convolution, put the output on the L1 and again on the L2, and then do it again for the ReLU. So I, I have to move it back and forth data. So uh, this is not optimal because we, we use a lot of bandwidth moving um, data back and forth. So what uh, we've done uh, with the generators is that we grouped um, uh, some, um, some operations, like for example, instead of having a convolution and a ReLU and a max pooling, um, we group them, we can group them together. And so have a layer which is doing convolution ReLU and max pool or convolution max pool and ReLU uh, with different options. So uh, five by five, three by three, two by four. And uh, this reduce a lot uh, the overhead in memory. Uh, so this is how it looks like after uh, we converted this graph to uh, an IT, uh, an auto Tyler um, um, graph model. So you will have, um, instead of having uh, six layers, which is come to the activation max pool, you will have one. Um, you, sorry, instead of six, you're gonna have two and then you, you're gonna have the fully connected. And uh, another thing uh, for which we need this graph level, optimi this graph level optimization is that um, if we think about uh, a, a simpler but similar uh, network to MNIST, so um, in, in the case we have um, three convolutional layers, they doesn't have biases, so it's only weights, and we have input, and then we have the activation, so the the output of, of the uh, of the, in, the interlayer output, and then the output. So when we start the execution, when we 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 flash our board, we're gonna have uh, the weights stored in the in the flash, and then um, we want to uh, pass to the execution. So what happens? is that uh, I would like to put the weights uh, in, um, in the memory, which is uh, possibly closer uh, to the cluster cores, but also um, actually uh, which can contain them. And another thing which I need to take into account is that uh, I gonna have um, uh, this uh, S0 output, uh, S0 and S1 output, which is this inter um, um, layer uh, activation that I need to send somewhere. So ideally, I would like that all this data stays in L1, but if it doesn't fit, I have to then move in L2 or maybe in L3. Uh, and so during graph execution, uh, I need to find the best um, utilization of the memory. And so this is what uh, the model and the graph, um, the auto Tyler model and the graph are doing. So, and, and the auto Tyler itself in doing so, we give some constraint. So we give how many L1 we, we want to exploit, the L2 and the L3, because maybe then we want to run multiple networks. So that's why we can adjust, or maybe we want to run something else along with uh, uh, our uh, neural network. So um, so that's, uh, that's, that, that's, that's, we express the constraint as we want, or maybe there is only one, a network which is running, so we can give the full uh, L1. Given that uh, we, we will probably need some, we need some place for the um, for the stacks, uh, and then uh, and then the auto Tyler does this optimization. And again, uh, we wrote it also because uh, if you have this network today, which is taking um, I don't know a QBGA input, but then tomorrow you think that you have done an exploration and this network could be run in. Uh, 160 by 160, then you need, uh, without having this tool, you, you had to need uh, to rewrite it again from scratch, all the memory movement, which is very painful and uh, error prone. So in, in uh, to give an overview of the working scheme, so once we have this uh, auto Tyler model and graph expressed, uh, we can use these generators, which are uh, so uh, generating our layers, so, Convolution, ReLU, etc., and exploit uh, the the uh, the tool to produce uh, a binary, which is then uh, executed on the host on the PC, and is producing what we call a user kernel, which is actually the code that runs on GAP8. So then, what we need to write is our user code, and using the basic kernels, uh, compile it and then run on um, on GAP8. So how this look like? Looks like uh, so we have um, three files 
generated. So we have this um, file representing the memory movement and the call to the to the basic kernels. Um, and then we have a binary file which is containing uh, all the data um, related to your, your model, so the, the weights and, the, and the, the biases. And from a perspective on, of, the, of the user, what should you call? So you, you will have two calls, which is one is this construct, which is uh, actually initializing all the data and putting in the pre-configured uh, memory. Then you have a, a run uh, command, and then you have a destruct if you want to deallocate the memory. So uh, if we have, if we take a, a piece of code um, uh, as an application, we uh, we allocate some data. We open the camera and uh, the HiMax, and we collect uh, uh, one image. Then we open the cluster, and uh, we allocate uh, some um, uh, um, structure to to run the cluster. And then what we do is that we actually um, call this constructor, run the inference. Um, and then call the destructor. Inside um, this, um, this function, uh, which, is, uh, which is here, it's uh, actually calling uh, these user kernels, which express all our graph, all, all our, uh, the, the user kernels of the graph. So in this third part, uh, presenting the outstyler will delve with uh, these uh, three points, but then we still have uh, so the, the 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 point on the quantization. So how do we quantize, and also how uh, do we extract the data and the information about our graph? And also we have another additional point: is how do we generate this outstyler model, which is something that we still need to do. Um, so for this, we have an end tool which is a tool written in Python and uh, which is able to import TM flight and ONNX graphs and uh, which generate uh, uh, as output an auto Tyler model, but also uh, can control some feature, for example, the memory that you want your graph to execute. So the size of the memory and which one, for example, you might have a board uh, without the L3 RAM because of cost or uh, power. And also, this tool is, is doing post-training uh, quantization and uh, um, also debugging because when you move from floating point to a fixed point, uh, you might would like to uh, debug uh, your code. And this also to validate uh, that the results that you have um, on the inference or, or with uh, your TensorFlow or your PyTorch uh, are actually the same that you, you get on GAP. So the main um, structure of the NN tool is that um, it sucks in uh, a, a, a model. It um, have an internal representation of the graph description and then convert it to the autotyler and then generates the autotyler model. But this is not also uh, this. It's also able to uh, do the graph exec execution and has inside uh, functional um, kernels uh, which are uh, quantized, so in eight or in sixteen, uh, quantized, um, so that um, uh, you can, from one side, do post-training quantization using your own uh, data set, but also validate uh, that um, the data, uh, the results that you have between the floating point and the fixed point, uh, the quantized version of your network, are not degraded. Uh, and also you can do debug. So look, for example, uh, at if there is one kernel which is particularly degrading your network once is post-trained quantization. So I'll give you a brief uh, overview of how um, uh, how to how to import uh, a TensorFlow Lite um, uh, model and then convert to AutoTyler. So this is um, again, and then tool is, is 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 also an open source tool uh, which is in in our SDK and which um, which is written in Python. So uh, and is uh, a command um, uh, command interpreter. So what we do is that uh, we open, for example, this is a mobile net, and uh, if it's already quantized, we can we can use this dash q uh, to load the quantization statistics which are stored. 
in the, the TensorFlow Lite model, and we can use a common call show um, to actually show uh, the structure uh, of the network and um, look at all, uh, all, all details related to which operation and uh, the sizes uh, and, and other informations. Then what we need to do uh, before uh, moving it to GAP is that we need to do a comment which is called adjust, which is um, uh, doing uh, some, um, some adjustment between uh, the, the, the TensorFlow Lite, in this case, uh, standard to GAP. For example, uh, moving uh, definition between um, HWC, so which are uh, uh, two to CHW, which is actually because in the autotiler, the representation is channel uh, first, uh, while in TensorFlow is channel last. And also, um, we need to do another comment, which is called fusions, which is actually looking in the graph and, and try to understand if, if it's possible to fuse some operations. So this is, again, what we've seen before. So in case we have, um, uh, convolution, ReLU, and max pool. Uh, he, he see that there is this sequence and is actually fusing these three operations in one. And then we can we, we have some comments related to show the quantization. Uh, and in case you want to see uh, the quantization that has been loaded and all the 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 ranks of the of the layers. And then with the gen we can generate this auto Tyler model. Uh, if we load a model which is not uh, pre-quantized, uh, we can actually use this uh, A-quant model. Uh, in this case, we, we are uh, forcing to 8-bit, but um, um, quantization could be also 16-bit. And then we need um, to give some images to, um, that are used to quantize. So the images are passed through the uh, network and uh, and um, the, the, the command is looking for, uh, for a quantization. We support two quantization schemes. Uh, one is the, the default one is the, this SQ8, which is an asymmetric um, quantization similar to the TensorFlow Lite one. And then we have Power02, which is an older quantization that we still support, and which is symmetric one. Oh. Uh, then in terms of model debug, you can also do use the tool to dump uh, uh, some layers, uh, for example, because usually you 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 you're gonna have you're gonna need it when you want to check between uh, the quantized and uh, the the floating point. So in this case, uh, we are saying that we would like to print the the layer two uh, quantized, but then you can, for example, in other cases. Uh, want to run quantized, but then dequantize because you want to check the output of written in the shell in, in floating point. Or you might want to save it to a special tensor and um, and then um, save uh, and then check between two tensors specific layers or with Q error um, uh, get the error uh, that you have in terms of SQNR. Okay. So to give a, fam a summary of this gap flow, um, uh, we this this au automates the end-to-end -end deployment of a neural network on uh, on uh, on the pulp-based gap processor. Uh, we we've seen two tools. So the first one, which is uh, the auto Tyler, which um, integrates highly optimized code and generate uh, automatically generate uh, memory movement between uh, the hierarchical memories. And then we see an tool which actually provides um, a Python environment to load um, a model and um, deploy, um, uh, optimize, quantize, and debug, and then um, generate an auto Tyler model. So I, um, uh, how uh, can you start working on this and, um, uh, or how can you see how all these things is uh, put in place. So we have um, um, a repository, which is called NN Menu, uh, which is composed of three main folders. One, which is called Ingredients, which is showing well-known networks running on GAP. Uh, 
uh, and and each of the repository that you have there, it's composed of um, uh, we have one TensorFlow Lite or, or NNX model, and then you can see that uh, um, compiling it, uh, your, your make file is calling these different steps. So you pass through NN tool, uh, you do the quantization or you load the quantized model, and then you and then you call the autotyler, and then there is the user code which exploits the user kernel that we just seen before. Um, starters, uh, it's um, some network uh, which could also be well known, but some of them they are developed by us, uh, and uh, they also use um, drivers. So most of them are made to work um, by default on uh, on GVSOC. Uh, so don't use them, but you can go in the make file and add, for example, the HiMax or, uh, um, or other specific um, output um, uh, devices. And then we have a, a third um, repository, which is called Mercu Main Courses, which is showing full-fledged full application, which are uh, running on specific boards, like, for example, we have one related to occupancy management or to re-identification. I'll show you a couple of them. So uh, the first one is a um, uh, mobile net. Uh, so there is a repository uh, which is called image uh, classification networks and uh, uh, which is showing all uh, the mobile net V1 and V2 um, ported onto GAP. Uh, so here is the, the how, how, where you can find the repository. And um, you have a lot of details about the frame per second that you get and the consumption in millijoule. Uh, and you can see that the whole um, uh, suite of example, it's running from the smaller one at 1.5 millijoule up to 55 millijoule for, for the big uh, for, for the bigger one. And it, this is also including external memories. And again, I mean, here um, we are not um, showing the sweet spot as uh, Daniele did this morning. This is done um, all in full uh, power. And another uh, one, it's um, work that uh, we have been done with um, uh, Lorenzo Lamberti uh, that is now uh, in Unibo. Um, and it's uh, combining two neural network for uh, detection and uh, recognition of license plate. So uh, one, the first part is related to um, running um, an SSD uh, neural network, which is uh, looking for um, for the license plate. And then once this license plate has been recognized, uh, it's uh, then um, passed through an, a network which is called LPRnet, which is um, kind of OCR looking for digits. Um, and so we've seen that uh, this is quite a big network. It's a 4.1 uh, me megabyte memory footprint af after the 8-bit quantization. Um, and we got a quite, a, quite a nice accuracy uh, in, in, in quantized version also. Uh, and here you have other details related to the distance of the recognition. And again, here we have quite a big power envelope for the full, for the full uh, network. Um, uh, but uh, as soon as we've seen in, with relation to other uh, automatic license plate um, uh, that have been developed on other system. It's uh, it's quite a lot. It's uh, as an impressive um, uh, energy consumption. And I think that that's it. Other uh, questions? Thank you, Francesco, for that nice talk. And uh, now we know much more about the GAP-8. Uh, uh, let's um, maybe head into the questions. Uh, I see one here, for example. Uh, we aim on starting to implement AI deck application. Currently, we try algorithm in the Python API, but ideally would like to transfer algorithm to the AI deck in the future. So to summarize, uh, Green, Greenway Toonshell supports TensorFlow, so we should define uh, DNNs in the TensorFlow for a smooth workflow. How about using Kyrgios as interface? Does it affect the ResultNet and the Greenway workflow? 
No, so I sometimes we put also in the slides Keras. Uh, you have to com to uh, convert to uh, ONNX or TensorFlow Lite. Uh, but no, there is no. You can use TensorFlow Keras. You can you can use um, whatever you want as soon as um, you can convert to these two formats. So either you do uh, your quantization yourself, um, and then. Uh, we only support uh, TensorFlow Lite because it's the only format which actually uh, properly embeds the, um, uh, the quantization statistics that we can then load. Uh, as, as, as soon as far as I heard uh, of NNX, it's, uh, they are still not properly handling it or not handling at all, but I, I know that we are working with them. I have a colleague which is working with them to, um, uh, to add this feature. Um, but no, I see no issues in, in working with Keras and some of our, um, uh, in some of our repository, uh, maybe after this, I can point you to, to some of them. We also have H5, so we have, we have the H5 file, and then we have a small script to convert it to, um, to TensorFlow Lite, and then, uh, from, and then we, we suck in from, from any tool the TensorFlow Lite. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's a continuation here. Uh, are there any other constraints we should take into account in terms of the net architecture, size of the net, maybe specific TensorFlow functionalities? Yeah, uh, yeah I have a slide which uh, it's a bit rough, that's why I didn't really present it. Uh, but um, yes, because um, for example, you would like to understand which is the, the maximum size that you can deploy actually. So uh, it's a bit complicated to uh, to give um, a math formula to that uh, actually works because you have to take into account the fact that you have 512 kilobyte of um, L2 memory, and that uh, for in the case of the AI deck you have eight megabyte of um, uh, of L3 RAM, but also that you we have a special option in um, in the auto Tyler, uh, which can actually leave some weights. Or some biases which are used, uh, which are maybe for us uh, small directly in uh, in the flash and load them when uh, when they are needed without using other space, and so uh, this leads to a formula which is um, uh, complicated in the sense that it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a bit it's not easy to to um, uh, to do by hand. Uh, what I can give you as a, as a um, as, as an idea is that, um, I mean, network like, for example, this uh, LPR net, which is uh, around 4.1 megabyte of footprint, it's um, uh, close to the limit. Uh, and then, I mean, this is something which runs, um, uh, which need, uh, which run at one frame per second. So uh, I, 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 I think it's, 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 we are reaching the limit of gap eight there. I don't know if it answers, but um... I think it was uh, good, good uh, on the way at least. Okay. Uh, another question: uh, You mentioned constructing, deconstructing the CNN. Say you're yeah. running a CNN in a loop. Does constructing and deconstructing the CNN model every execution to free no. up memory for other tasks significantly affect latency? Okay. Or is it preferred? Yeah, you understood the question, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understood the question. Um, uh, I mean, yes, yeah, the answer is yes and no. Uh, I wanted to take this again. Yeah, so um, it depends. It depends. Uh, obviously, if you have to load and you have a big network to load from L3, this will affect, yes, for sure. So um, let me took this code again. I mean, here uh, you can actually, uh, play with a constraint and um, let's say that you need, uh, I don't know, 50 kilobyte of L2 to do something else. Maybe it's better to give less memory to the to the network uh, and so that you, you run the constructor once and then you have your, uh, um, your parameters which are deployed uh, in L3 RAM and in L2 and then run the other task. But it's, uh, it's always a trade-off. So you, you need to understand which is the um, the the other um, task that you want to do, 
And from the other side, um, there is no, I mean, the constructor, you can run it once and then call the network on the cluster several times. This is made for that. OK, thank you. Um, I have some questions myself. For example, the gap nine. Uh, could you maybe share quickly uh, something about this? Yeah, so we, we uh, I mean, it, it will be um, available uh, next year, um, I believe. Uh, that, that, I mean, we already launched the product, and uh, uh, but the production version of the chip will be available, um, I would say, uh, somewhere in the second quarter of uh, 2022. And uh, uh, there are several optimization um which uh, we um, we applied the uh, first but uh, um, the first one is that it's a new technology so it's uh, in 22 nanometers uh, and uh, so it's a chip uh, which um, um, which just with the te technology we gain a lot in power consumption and also we worked a lot on a few um uh, points that we see that in gap 8 they are uh, they, they were um suboptimal um so for example the um, uh, 2d memory movement from the micro dma uh, we had the core in the cluster uh, and um, we have a new uh, accelerators and also we have a unit uh, which is um, related to um, audio dsp processing and we have bigger memories, so uh, the L2, it's uh, around one and a half megabyte. And uh, the L1, it's uh, 120, 128 kilobytes. So it's, um, uh, it's it, it, yeah, it's, uh, it's getting uh, larger, can get larger data in. And in terms of processing power, is that increased as well? Yeah. Um, I mean, we have, uh, from one side, we have floating point units. Sorry, I'm moving this, but I, I don't think I have a slide here. Uh, um, we have floating point units in the cluster, uh, and uh, we have, um, uh, I mean, we have this new core and uh, compression on the DMA uh, that are actually to help uh, so to ease to have uh, less stress on on uh, on memory, so that the data which is moved uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's less. And uh, also we have one more core which is actually coordinating the other eight. Um, so yeah, the, the answer is yes. And also the chip can go um, higher frequency, uh, higher frequencies. Uh, so the answer is definitely yes. Mm. Nice. Yeah, we'll hope we'll have a AI deck 2.0 at one point with the I, yeah, I, gap nine. I, I hope. I hope it. Yes. Is. Yeah. I hope it too. Um, another thing I'm often struggling with the multi-core CPU is debugging. Do you have any tips uh, when thing doesn't go as you want? Um, yes. Um, so we have. Uh, it's not fully supported uh, because uh, first problem that you probably you probably have is that if you want to understand if it's a parallel code problem or if it's your algorithm problem. So if it's, it's not just parallelization, but it's that your code uh, won't work even if you have one core. Um, so for that and also to go faster in deployment, <coughs> sorry, we have a modality which is called Emule. Um, and which you can actually run the basic kernels on an x86 machine. Um, uh, this is something that we use under development. And also, I mean, then we have GDB, um, but in case of parallel programming is not uh, that helpful uh, because uh, uh, if you, for example, uh, forget, forgot a barrier somewhere, it actually means that, um, I mean, this would be hard to see uh, with GDB. Um, and also another thing which um, we use quite a lot, it's uh, GVSOC uh, because uh, it has um, stack overflow uh, warnings. 
um, which is uh, um, in some cases, if you automatically give size of the L1 and then um, uh, you didn't take into account uh, the fact that in L1 you have you need to have also space for stacks for all the cores, not for just one. Uh, so if you give if you give one k to uh, the eight cores, then you need to remember that you have eight k which which are uh, used for the stacks. Uh, or also if you have um, uh, it's not enough um, uh, the size, then it's a, it's a quite a nice feature. Um, but then yes, and DVSoc that's a simulated. Uh, yeah. Or yes, yeah, that's a simulator. That's a simulator which yeah. runs on a PC. It's yeah. uh, it's quite fast, uh, in the sense that you can run all these examples in seconds. Um, so it's quite convenient, even uh, for someone that wants to try out. Um, we use we, we even internally we use it a lot before um, testing stuff on boards. Also because when you are traveling or you are moving, you don't have to bring with yourself uh, the board all the time, but you can start. Uh, testing stuff and see the performance. Also, um, uh, we keep uh, the error between uh, the performance that you get on, on the real chip and on GVSOC under 10%. So it's quite reliable also to give you some numbers in terms of uh, um, the cycles uh, that uh, that your code takes to, to, to execute. Obviously, you don't have all the drivers part, so, uh, but you have uh, all the parts related to algorithms running on cluster and and uh and uh fc yes uh, thank you we have uh, one last question i have before we move on um do you have any cool like example use cases or customers you could share uh, i know battery powered cameras is one thing i might be possible but uh, do you have anything you could share I mean, we um, have been uh, working with um, uh, Lean Red, uh, which is a, um, a French manufacturer of uh, infrared cameras on a reference design uh, for occupancy management, so for count people uh, indoor. Um, we don't, I mean, I don't have any um, cool customer that I can disclose at this moment. Oh, no. uh, uh, um, I mean, we have cool customers, but I cannot yeah, disclose yeah. at this no, moment. We understand. But I hope that um, yeah. they, they will be they will be soon disclosed. Yes. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Um, okay, thank you so much, Francesco. And thank you. Uh, thank you. Right 